To me, the flag really is the symbol that represents the freedoms that we enjoy. It really is the foundation based on the principles on which the Republic was formed. It is probably, in my opinion, the, the most recognized symbol anywhere in the world. I mean, everyone sees and knows the American flag. Well, I've been interested in history and politics since I was a teenager, but I started collecting flags uh, probably in 1991. And it was the result of my wife giving me my very first flag as a 30th wedding anniversary gift. Parade flags are generally described as flags that are three feet and under in size and could be as little as a few inches. They were originally designed for a specific event, for example, a parade or a political rally or some kind of a commemoration. They're not big flags like you would find flying on ships and flying on buildings. Spectators would wave the flag and the intent was to discard it. So collecting parade flags is a little difficult in the sense that many did not survive, they were destroyed. The 26s are generally considered the real beginning of the, and this would be like 1837, thereabouts, really the beginning of parade flags. That, that's the time period. Then up until the Civil War, we saw lots, lots more of them. The primary flag during the Civil War was the 34-star flag. And the interesting story about that is after Lincoln was elected, South Carolina became the first state to secede from the Union, followed by six others within several months thereafter. Lincoln refused to eliminate any stars from the flag, so they produced 34-star flags. And on his way to his inauguration, he stopped in Philadelphia and raised a 34-star flag above Independence Hall, just to show the, the unity of the Union. Flags generally were either wool or cotton, and there are some that are made out of silk. And paper as well. I had five small paper flags that were printed to wave at Lincoln's funeral procession. And they would be glued to little sticks. And I had the five uh, in my collection, which is pretty rare for paper to last from 1865 to now. One of the most interesting aspects of flag collecting, it's the one that I enjoy probably the most, People would take an event that they might have witnessed and would record that particular moment. And it's that one specific moment in history that I really love researching. I do have a flag of a young girl who was eight years old who witnessed Lindbergh flying into an airport in Vermont to visit a friend of his. And he flew the Spirit of St. Louis up to his private airport. He landed, 30,000 people were there. And there was a young girl who recorded on the back of a flag, I saw Charles Lindbergh and uh, signed her name. I'll have many flags like that because I enjoy the history and the capturing of that specific moment. And I have the flag that I purchased from a dealer friend of mine many years ago, and it's a uh, 35 star flag, which dates to just about around the time of the Civil War. And what was interesting about this particular flag is the fact that it comes with a little note that says they are singing to my flag at a torchlight parade of Lincoln's men with their pickaxes and spades in 1864. As I stood on my porch waving this flag, the company of men opposite the house turned and saluted my flag and sang Rally Round the Flag Boys. Before 1912, the derangement of star patterns that existed was left solely to, to the maker of the flag. And I think people are generally surprised to see how many different star patterns that have existed. And it really started right before the Civil War through the centennial in 1876, then upward till about 1912. And you'll find circles and double circles and squares and circles within squares. And my favorite is what is called the great star pattern, where the stars are arranged in the form of a star and is probably one of the most beautiful and simple patterns. The first flag was created by order of Congress on June the 14th, Flag Day, but in 1777. And it's, it's specified that the flag would be 13 stripes, 
alternate red and white, there would be a blue field with 13 white stars representing a new constellation, the new birth of a new nation. The flag was most likely designed by Francis Hopkinson, who was a New Jersey delegate to the Continental Congress. The reason we know that he designed the first flag is because he submitted an invoice to Congress for the work that he did on it. And he asked for a, a quarter cask of wine in, in payment for his services, which he never collected. After the uh, first flag act was passed in 1777, a couple of states joined the union, specifically Vermont and Kentucky, and we got to 15 states. And Congress passed the second flag act, which specified that there would be 15 stripes and 15 stars on the flag. The 15 star and 15 stripes flag known as the Star Spangled Banner flag was the flag waving over Fort McHenry when Francis Scott Key wrote his famous poem in defense of Fort McHenry, which later became the words to the Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem. That flag remained in existence until 1818, and by that time we were up to 20 states. So it became, uh, it became obvious that something had to be done because adding a stripe and a star for each new state was not practical. So Congress set up a committee and they asked a Navy captain by the name of Samuel Reed to develop some guidelines, which he did. And his guidelines were basically, we should revert back to 13 stripes, red and white, representing the original 13 colonies and that we should add a star for each new state that joins the Union, and that star would be added on the 4th of July following the year of statehood. This way the flag could evolve over time as more states join the Union, yet it would keep generally the same appearance. He also suggested that the stars be arranged in a great star pattern, but that portion of his recommendation was never adopted by Congress. So over the course of the next approximately 100 years, the configuration of the star pattern was left completely to that of the flag maker. In 1912, it was decided that this would be set, the pattern would be set by presidential executive order. Just strictly looking at the evolution of the flag, how it evolved from 1777 up until now, how we went from 13 states to 50, how the present 50 star flag now is our oldest flag. It's the 27th official flag that we've had in this country. Now it's the oldest flag. This flag has been through 11 presidents. The 48 star flag before it was the second oldest, saw two world wars and eight presidents. So there's a history attached to the, to the collecting aspect of it. Through these flags and through the experiences that people had as a result of them, they're part of history. They're part of, the, uh, of America's history. I know that these flags will live on because they've been properly preserved. And I consider myself fortunate. I'm a, a custodian of history, if you will. And I'm proud to do that. And I understand my role in it. <laughs>